All right, dude. Yeah. Fucking birthday podcast. Yeah. Hey, thanks. For, sort th- of. Thanks for taking the interview. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> CNN wanted me, but I just didn't think morally I could justify it. You know? No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you're a busy man. So, yeah. you know, it's been a long time since we've been able to catch up. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. Fucking. Yeah. I'm 30. I'm 30 years old. And. Don't tell people that. We've decided to have a chat on camera and record it and kind of use it as a launching pad for uh what we're going to call the saint maker club Mm -hmm. um which will be a five dollar a month subscription service um with which you will get podcasts much like this with the breakdown of each each song that we are releasing bi-weekly through the year um uh, as well as discounts on merch and special releases, things like that. Yeah. Um, but namely, I would say mainly the the main perk are these podcasts. And we're just gonna we're gonna talk a lot and open up about our process, who we are, what we're doing, what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, which is new for us because we're relatively we're super private people. Yeah. Um, and have had much strain in the <laughs> face of this attention economy being extremely online being extremely online and stuff so it's been this is a i don't know i'm comfortable like doing this like we've talked about this we kind of like mentally prepared for it but Mm -hmm. um well and so uh since you guys don't already know most of the podcasts that we have planned are like discussions of the individual tunes where we go through and talk about you know what inspired what and play individual tracks and stuff like that and then you know we're hoping we'll just have extra shit where we've got something to talk about we'll have a place to talk about it sure yeah and i think i mean the the intention is to let the conversations kind of go where they may yeah um i don't know we have really intense conversations all the time we've just never recorded them so um enough people have kind of gotten on our asses to be a little more public facing so this is this is going to be our attempt, and I'm I don't know I feel like the two of us with our personalities I'm a little more comfortable doing this in long form, yeah, than uh, like trying to be entertaining in 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, we're just not. It's not where our talents <laughs> lie, man. I don't know, you know what no, I'm saying. It's not. And unfortunately, it's those skill sets that um, kind of grant you atten- the attention necessary to you know yeah. launch a launch a career. But we. I don't know. I think we've, we we're trying our best. Cass. We're trying our best, man. And we, I don't know. I think that was part of the reason why we turned to this like biweekly release schedule. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we don't post tons of photographs of ourselves. We're not really like selfie guys and mm-hmm. doing all that. Um, so why don't we start releasing the songs like they're our photographs rather than treating them they're like like they're our fucking children or something you know we've always been really yeah. precious about the work and it's true it was time to let go a little bit yeah it has been weird like we've always thought of ourselves as an album band um in like any of our incarnations yeah it's always been like no this is a work 45 minute long you know single piece of material or something like that it's been interesting and it's funny how quickly we're just like ah never mind you know we just flipped that switch we (laughs) were super adamant about that for years and our poor yeah yeah, whatever yeah our poor manager at the time uh had been telling us to do this pretty much the whole time um but we just resisted because yeah we're like we don't do that that's not who we are we want to like you know, make more, we want to be more, we want to be careful with our art. And we, we've always been really careful about what we put forward and we've always made a shitload of music, but only so much as like trickled to the surface. And, um, we've also had this idea for a while and been talked out of it two or three times. Right. Like, ah, what if we just put out singles? That seems like kind of the future of the way people release music. And then, you know, we sign with a label. They're like, no, we've got Here's how you run an album campaign. We're just like, all right, well, apparently we were fucking it up. Uh, you know, Even, maybe it's just our fault. We didn't know how to do it. It's not like the model that doesn't work. And so finally we're no longer with them. We're just like, no, we're, and we currently have people still trying to talk us out of doing it. 
Sure. It's like, no, we're going to at least try this for a while and fucking see what happens, you know? And everyone's got good reasons. Um, sure. People are, you know, like, all the the reasons that have come to my attention as of late are all, like, algorithmic. It's all people being like, you're not giving the music enough time to resonate, and the algorithm's going to pick it up, and it's got to find out, you know, it's, like, got to kind of work its way through the data that the song collects over time. And uh, they're right, but I, I, uh, I guess our point and our conceit is I don't we don't care it's like the point is like stop like stay out of the results yeah I mean this has been I mean I wanted to talk about this in this conversation it's like the part I'm I'm getting older I'm not getting any younger um COVID set everybody back a bit but I definitely don't want to sit around complaining being like we were going to be the biggest band in the world (laughs) and then COVID has it's like it's just not true uh, we were still struggling, but um, I we as like this new process or this new release schedule. It's it's about staying out of the results because I was pretty mm-hmm. much ruining this for myself by keeping such a watchful eye on the numbers and obsessing over how many streams we got, our Insta followers moving in the right direction, or our YouTube subscriptions moving in the right direction, and that shit's important for having a career now i mean that's 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 what it is that's Mm -hmm. what your career is is it's directly correlates to those numbers but um i mean i think some of the algorithmic uh, not that there's nothing to that but i think people don't like spotify's algorithm is pretty fucking secret and so like i'm not saying you can't deduce anything about it from experience and like watching how things go but like a lot of that shit feels like just reading tea leaves to me where it's like no i like uh you know um, like people who day trade stocks and shit, they're like, oh, well, the graph made this shape and that means what's going to happen next is this or whatever. And it's like, man, I'm pretty sure what happened is you put money in and if you wait long enough, you're going to make money. And so you're going to think you're a genius, even if those like little weird day to day fucking things that you talk yourself into don't make any fucking sense. Sure. And so like, I think some of that's going on with the Spotify shit where it's just like, no, I figured out a way to do it. It's like, no, you just put music out and people liked it eventually. And sure, that's. You know, we're doing the same thing. No harm, no foul. A hundred percent. I took, you put me on to Indiepreneur, mm-hmm. which is this subscription service for any young musicians or artists that are trying to learn more about really anything, about marketing, about the algorithm, the Spotify algorithms, about Instagram campaigns, whatever. How to do album campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they run these, like, these classes. And I took this class on, on Spotify, and it's super informative and all that. And I walked away. I was like, okay, like, I have this wealth of knowledge now. But really what I came out of it with was, like, the algor- the Spotify the programmers, the developers, they change up yeah. the algorithm on like a quarterly basis. Mm-hmm. So that when people people were finding out that like pre-saves used to be super important. And if you got thousands and thousands of pre-saves, you could trick the algorithm into thinking that it's like, all right, well, this song's getting pinged all over the place and everybody's loving it. But really it's not. It's like you're already pre-existing audience mm-hmm. engaging with you. It's not about like you know, like disco- or, uh, discovery, um, Spotify is a discovery platform. That's why it's our friend. Mm-hmm. It's not our friend in other ways, but it is our friend in that it, it actively works to show your music to new people. Yeah. Um, it's trying. It's trying. Uh, so I just, I don't know. I'm like, I, I think you just said it, man. It's like, all it comes down to is do you make music that people like and then share with their friends? Yeah. And that happens at a glacial pace. Mm -hmm. it's not not everything's going to be old town road yeah um well and it's frustrating for us too because like everything that's going to come out this year has been done for months yeah and so it feels even more glacial from our side where it's like you know waiting for two weeks for something is kind of a long time in the internet economy but when you feel like holy fuck it's been two years since we made this song it's even worse definitely um especially when we'll we'll write something that we're really excited about, you know, yesterday or something. And I'm like, ah, man, like put this to the front of the line. But you have (laughs) virtually a year's worth of material stacked in front of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I like what we're doing now because it does allow us to have a little more fun like that and kind of play whatever chip that we want to or whatever given moment. Sure. Um, But... I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I believe in the process. I'm a big Russ fan. I, I, 
the music's not it's not like that's what I'm listening to all the time or anything but I really admire the guy's ethic and I watch his interviews with a really keen ear we should tell people that's where we're stealing this model from basically is yeah you know, just so they know why his name came up it's kind of like the Russ mentality man it's like he just released a song every week for three years mm-hmm. and by the end of which he, he was basically on like he had forged himself a career without having any real connections in the music industry there was some weird shit going around that like his uncle was working for the la- a label and you got and it's it's all it, none of it's real whatever um yeah it's just people making up excuses for somebody else's success well and if you make music um, long enough you're gonna know somebody who fucking works at a label it's that's sure. not your ticket especially yeah exactly unless there's like some serious serious nepotism with some serious heavy hitters like there's fucking that's not getting you anywhere no and I even know if it labels. was serious serious nepotism and shit it's like your your music still has to be it still has to resonate yeah, with people yeah if it was dog shit nobody would fucking <laughs> like, care so I just really admire his ethic. I, I, I just liked that mentality. There's parts, um, we're going bi-weekly instead of weekly because we're not making the same kind of shit as him. Mm-hmm. If we were more like a straight ahead rap act that was like, you know. Make a loop, throw it, some it, bars on it. Yeah, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Then I think we'd be we'd be able to keep at that pace. Um, but that's not really what we do. Our shit's, mm-hmm. I don't know, a little more complicated, I suppose. But um, it's really about the ethic has nothing to do with his music but mm-hmm. um and i believe in it i even if it doesn't work quote unquote i, I don't know what work means totally i wish i should probably yeah. define exactly what that looks like but um i still feel like we're getting a lot more off our chest than we would if we kept running things the way we were running things like I thought one of the less exciting parts of how we used to release music was we'd write really meaningful things some of them would make the album, some of them wouldn't, and the ones that wouldn't, they just died. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, we'd be like, man, we worked for weeks on that. Like, it's a beautiful piece. Why isn't it going out? Well, it doesn't really work with the narrative. And Yeah. You it's know. a lot more fun this way, too, because, like, when you put out a record, you pretty much blow your load all at once. <laughs> right? It's like you've, there's all this built-up energy, yeah. and then you put it out, and everybody's like, cool, thanks. And then you just fucking go back to everyday life. We're like, yeah. all right, well, I guess time to start working on the next one. Where at this one, it's like, you know, every couple of weeks at least you get the, hey, nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I like that song. That's yeah. kind of like the most you get too, you know what I mean? Hey, I like that the new one. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. That was a good one. I'll take it. I will, man. It's, uh, I feel it's helping me with my relationship with music. I felt like my shit was getting kind of damaged through obsessing over the the album rollouts um not seeing the results that you want come in mm-hmm. you know and and then you kind of take that as a personal affront to like the quality of your work and uh i was just beating myself to 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 death with it it was like it was it, it was ruining everything so um that was a big reason as to why we went i don't know just like totally back to two guys Mm-hmm. I mean, total simplicity. Mm-hmm. Um, two guys in a basement making this music, like no label, no nothing. Like it's really just the two of us again, and it's scary um, to turn thirty and feel like you're just starting over again. Yeah, from perhaps just a better vantage point. But uh, I, there's a part of it that feels really liberating, mm-hmm. and like cleansing. There's no baggage. You okay, yeah. I like it. Me too. Me too, man. Um, well, yeah. So that's the plan, guys. <laughs> Same Maker Club. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Um, hell yeah. Speaking of baggage, <laughs> what have we should got? we fucking get into the old shit? Yeah, we thought it'd be we thought it'd be funny. Um, Matt, for my birthday, hmm? went through his parents' house. Yeah. I mean, I guess this is better told by you. You're the person doing it. But you dug up a bunch of old recordings from when we were in, like, middle school. Yeah, most of them were pretty fucking atrocious. But... Well, we should... Uh, but also amazing. <laughs> what's the... I know we've mentioned fucking that we've been making music together since we were, like, 14 or something. Younger. Uh, we were 12 when we met and 13 when we started. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was because it was... I just remember it definitely being middle school. Yeah. And there are... Somewhere there are even older recordings of us. I mean, that must have only been a couple months into... It's like the seventh grade. ...being in a band that we did. Uh, horrible. Man, I can't imagine how those things fucking sound. 
I was trying to find them. So yeah, basically, I did manage to find some old recordings of our old band. Uh, there's still some shit I know exists somewhere that um, if it ever turns up, maybe we'll share pieces. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, fuck it, man. I, don't... <laughs> I mean, the really terrible shit is like, all right, go ahead, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. The stuff where you're like kind of okay and trying really hard is, is more embarrassing almost because it's like, mm. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, so we met. We met in the seventh grade, and by we did our eighth grade talent show together, where we did uh, all the small things, and and an original, and we burned that shit down. It was fucking mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, and uh, and we've been in a band ever since together. Arguably, still our most successful show to date. <laughs> <laughs> brutal, 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 brutal. One time we did a in the ninth grade, we did a show at this this theater called the Wheaton Grand Theater in Wheaton, Illinois. And we brought so many kids, man. It was mm-hmm. like hundreds of kids. And we made so much money. Made, we were like 13 or something. Made and, like $900 in merch. Yeah. And it, I just look back and I'm like, damn, dude. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of nights on the road where we're not making that. Well, so. and then we were like, damn, we've got an in. Now we just keep doing this, keep making money, like build this. And the fucking venue closed like two weeks after that show. <laughs> yeah. So, like the Wheaton Grand. I think they might be refurbishing, but it just stopped existing after that show. <laughs> Fuck man, that was our end. But we, uh, yeah, when we started, we started making this really, I don't know, we were emo kids, man. We yeah. liked. Well, and the band was, uh, so sorry, the first band was called Teasel, which was um, fucking, it was just a weird hodgepodge of cats, man. Because um, I came, I was really into like ACDC and shit, which is not. I can't even really get in contact with that part of myself anymore. I don't understand, but that's what I was into. Um, and our buddy Kyle Jackson approached me about singing for the group because I could do the like Brian Johnson falsetto thing. Yeah, I while. remember this. Yeah, and that was his like, oh fuck, he can do that. And he was really into classic rock and stuff like that. So like, he was the guy. He was the Samuel L. Jackson in the situation where he's like putting the team together. Yeah. Um, I don't. Were, did you even like play bass, or did you just want to be in a band? Uh, I played bass because my older brother played guitar, and I mainly wanted to be in his band. Right. But uh, my brother was a little too cool for us back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he had his own. He had, I mean, we. I basically wanted to be in a band because my brother wasn't being a band. Mm-hmm. I was like his little duckling. Anything he did, I wanted to do. So we made one. Yeah. And I mean, when we say I played bass, I was <laughs> one finger hammering away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just, um. And then, yeah, I had, like, horrible performance anxiety because I didn't fucking know any of you people. I knew Kyle. Um, who else Mike Korn find? Was fucking Kelsey there yet? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Our friend Kelsey was around. Our friend Mike was around. But it really resulted in you, me, and Kyle. Yeah. And, uh... But anyway, you ended up singing because uh, I was just, like, freaked out, <laughs> yeah. basically. And then we figured out that Kyle could scream. And, yeah. And, uh, and that's when things... And the rest like, is history. <laughs> the rest is history. And we just made this really... I don't know, shitty emo music for a few years. Yeah, it got it got better towards the end. We got like a lot more like progressive with it. There we had like like eight minute tunes that never repeated and all this kind of shit. There's no real that one. Structure. I don't know what it's called, but uh, the one you're talking about, I I sometimes fantasize about re-recording. I mean, because like I think the production. I, mean, I it's not like it was a great song, but like the production was the main problem, and just like skill on our instruments was a problem. But, like, the tune itself was all right, and I just think it would be fun and kind of fucking goofy to, like, go into a professional studio and redo everything. We would need to find the original recording, though, because yeah, yeah. Uh, I it's have somewhere. no idea. Yeah. It's got to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, It's but on some fucking CDR in my parents' closet somewhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I remember we, I mean, we had, like, a whole DVD and stuff that your dad burned for us and shit about, mm-hmm. like, I think it was the Wheaton Grand Show and had, like, the... Ch- it was, it oh, was shit, amazing, man. We were right, so yeah. proud of ourselves. I mean, we were... It was amazing. We we Matt and I struck up a lifelong friendship through this band. Um, we would every Friday, we would take your bus home to your parents' mm-hmm. house, and we would go down into your basement, and we'd play for hours and hours. And we would turn off the lights, and he had a he had a pool table down there. And if you turn off all the lights and just turn on the pool light, it gave the basement this like the, red like, stained glass kind yeah. of red hue. And we would just close our eyes and just imagine we were in. You know? Sometimes we could borrow Adam Strobe light or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we would just play so hard for so long, like sweating, doing like the guitar flips and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Just so much of it. And it was just pure. It was pure, man. It was so fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, and I think if you would have told 14-year-old Matt and Sammy that they would be 
still make be making music together uh, at 30, 29. I, you're still in your 20s. I can't pr- pull you uh, in the club yet. I'm just a, just just a, a wee 20 something, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, we'd be, and we'd be living together in, in our, in a studio. In our own home studio. Um, an amazing home studio, too. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if everybody's seen where we're at, but like, we, here, I'll click to the wide real quick. This is, this is the third bedroom in the basement of our, of our, too flat basically and uh yeah this, this isn't is even really the studio part of the studio yeah this is ostensibly a vocal booth which was recently turned into kind of a podcast studio bones and i now have our own separate vocal chains for when we're recording but we also have you know we have access to our drummer zach marks who lives up in jefferson park we set up a studio much like this in his house and he can track live drums straight in to our ableton sessions like over zoom it's incredible i mean we have that would be a fun fully to fledged. take a screen cap, you know, just like yeah. put online so you guys can see how it works. It's pretty cool. That's good. Same maker club stuff. Like let them sit in on a drum session. Sure. Um, but we, I mean, it's amazing. We can com- cut commercially viable records from the comfort or comfort of our own home. And we took our home studio really, really seriously. And it's a really sacred place. I mean, this place has kind of kept us in Chicago yeah. for years. I mean, like. We, I mean, I guess this is a bigger conversation, but we're just going to let this thing flow, right? Okay, um, yeah. We are both the kinds of people that came from places where we could have been anything, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and we, in our early 20s, I would say like 22, got serious. Um, okay. So the current studio uh, is really just like sort of a progression from we had man, this, this timeline is all fucked up, but we were in a band in college uh, and we were like, well, we could at least record our own vocals, probably. Like, I could probably figure that out. So we bought an interface and a microphone and, you know, the studio, it's not like we bought everything for a studio all at once. It was just like, well, we had a computer and a microphone and an interface at one point and then you just start fucking adding shit to that. Get cool speakers or whatever and then, you know, close to 10 years later, we've got this super ridiculous setup. But like, you know, that Sammy Language record was basically cut on one microphone with like a blanket we took the door off my closet and like threw a blanket over it as basically our vocal booth yeah and then we recorded it in my bedroom yeah in multiple like in in our in your bedroom in the apartment we were sharing and then we both moved <laughs> to your parents house i, oh, I yeah, was living right. with your parents and then we we uh Carpet yeah, box. Decked out. Yeah, we made a carpet box, basically. Don't do that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Not an acoustically um, sound choice. No. Hit me up. But it has been it's been the slow process of, of building this space and it's super sacred. It's like um I was saying, you know, we're both the kind of people that were born in situa- born into situations where we could have been anything, you know, like I could have had a very serious career in a number of fields and so could you, you know, Mm -hmm. and we just over time got more and more serious about this. And the more we looked at the world, the more unattractive a lot of it looked. (laughs) And, uh, we were like, you know, I think we're, I think we're, we're starting to teeter on being good enough at this Mm -hmm. to where we can make a real run. Yeah. And here we are, you know, it's like, and I regret none of it. Um, it's incredible. I it's like the most rewarding part of my, it's it is my life, you know. It's our life. Uh for those that don't we've been living together for eleven years. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew that. Yep. Um, all of which we've been making music. Mm-hmm. So um I don't know, man. It's a it's a really, really sacred space and I couldn't recommend more highly for people that are trying to start a career in music and all that. It's to just just take the time. Yeah. Learn Ableton. That is one thing that's been nice about the pandemic is everybody seems to have figured out they need to have some sort of fucking space at home to do this shit in. Like, yeah. you know, uh, I've spent half the pandemic just helping people set up their like home production <laughs> sure. digs and shit like that. So that's gotten a little better. But yeah, we used to just have to jam that shit down people's throat. Like, man, if you can't record yourself as like a vocalist too, it's $400. Buy a fucking microphone. You never have to pay for studio time ever again. Paying for studio time seems like such a foreign concept to me at this point. Yeah, it's insane. Like, it's been so, it's just so crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, we were playing in that group in college together with my older brother. Uh, I was playing drums. Bones was on guitar. My brother was the front man. We had every bass player ever come through. Um, 
it seemed like bi-monthly that we had somebody new coming into play but yeah um but we would we would spend so much money <laughs> so much money on recording and uh you're given this limited time in a space that you don't totally feel comfortable where you feel like you can't fuck up you start getting in your head if you fuck up a take three or four times and all mm-hmm. this kind of shit and it's just such a foreign concept to me the fact that anybody's doing it that way uh blows my mind yeah and you kind of like you really have to have your shit worked out in rehearsal space yeah like that song has to be fucking done and it's hard to do that when you can't play it back and like take shit out or play around with stuff you know right yeah 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 works better for some genres but um let's let's take a look at some of this teasel stuff <laughs> sure all right guys fucking so these are some of the on your butts yeah <laughs> These are some of the original... I mean, let's just do, like, one. I don't think we need to do more than one of these. No. No, we do not. Oh, wow, man. This was our hit. This was our hit. This is called Caroline. People like this song, man. It's not terrible. I remember recording this, man. We were just little kids, and we recorded, and that's this guy named Scott. It was, like, his garage. Oh, yeah. Very sketch. I could probably still play this. I mean, it's not complicated, but. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Man, I really hope somebody from back in the day is listening to this. Here's this, yeah. And here's this. One more chance, I'll prove to you I'm more than a second <laughs> Alright, is that enough? The, wait, just do the hook. Do the chorus, yeah. the hook and then we can stop. <laughs> there it is. Oh, nice little harmony. Was that's that me or Kyle? That's Kyle. Kyle oh, Jason. Yeah. I miss you, Kyle. Kyle wrote this, right? I don't know. This is a... Uh, yeah, this is a... Fuck it. This is a song about unrequited love in uh, his English class. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Until I die. I die. I die. Fucking idiots. <laughs> we were trying them, man. <laughs> that one's not even atrocious. I mean, it's not good, but. They seem to get worse after that. Yeah. You know, I think it was. I don't know what happened, but they seemed. <laughs> we got a lot heavier. I don't yeah. think it necessarily made us better. <laughs> no. No, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. But, I don't know, it's interesting to see the process. It's like, I don't know, listen to that, like put on goose feathers in the casket or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just where we're at today. It's it's fun. It's a fun roadmap to look at. We tried, immediately after that, we started trying to be under oath too, which is, <laughs> as it turns out, really fucking hard. Yeah. Under These guys oath. can play their goddamn instruments. Yeah. Incredible, And man. you can't just hammer away like dissonant fucking grindcore chords and expect that that's going to work right right i mean there was a really fruitful hardcore scene where we were growing up yeah in like aurora and they uh i mean like really really heavy grind like grindcore like like the like yeah, the pig yeah. squeals and shit like that and that's kind of what we grew up around man we'd go to those shows and hop in the mosh pits and um, for me, it was large in large part due to my brother's involvement in the scene. Like my brother was in a cool band; they they had cool music, and yeah. you know, the cool girls listened to their music, and they went to their shows. And I was like, I will trying to do that. I, I'm, try- <laughs> I'm trying to do that shit. Um, and then we just we really took the whole bottle of pills, and we we just never yeah. stopped. Um, yeah. I feel like that's been kind of our life. Is like we've had circles of musicians and people around us that would work with us and make music with us and one by one people would just kind of move on with their lives which is totally fine I don't know I don't think it'd be right for me to sit here and be like they just didn't have what it takes I I don't think it was their life's focus you know what I mean but you and I were kind of the constant that stayed through the whole thing and And then there were two and then there were two and honestly I kind of that's a huge reason as to how Bone Lang became Bone Lang. It was just like we were kind of the only two left. Yeah, so there was also um <laughs> Well, so we had that band, uh, which was called Teasel and then it was called City Light Detour for a while, which is somehow a worse name. 
I, we were trying to be, I don't even know. <laughs> and then, yeah, your brother's band broke up. Mm-hmm. Uh, model broke up, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the deal? Everybody went to fucking college or some shit? Yeah, I think people just moved on with their lives. And then you got invited to play drums for that. So same question. Did you actually play drums or was it just like, nice, they need a drummer. I'm going to figure this shit out. Uh, Brian Moynihan left his drum set at our house because that's where my brother's band was rehearsing at the time. Oh, that's right, yeah. And I just played it every day. I played him every day after school. Uh, he sold me his drum set. I think he just kind of lost interest in drums and yeah. I just bought him off him. And then I just figured it out. And Adam and I would play every day after school. Um, and slowly, like a more mature sound started happening. I guess from the last thing, if you listen back to those recordings, that uh, yeah, you know, some of them hold up. But, um, and then you you came over. It was like a few months later. Yeah, you came over, and I think you were playing bass at first in the mm-hmm. band or something like that. And then you moved over to, to guitar. Um, and that lasted for years and years. I mean, we played in that band for like seven years or eight years or something. Yeah, and it was kind of our life. It was like when I look back. Added. The music was the recordings and the music were decent. Um, we, yeah, it was like an indie rock still, thing. It was yeah, pretty. I, up I, the I enjoy Animus, which is our record. Fucking, you guys can look up District Somnium. You could probably find. I know you can find Heading East, which is the inferior record, but it was kind of. But we, I don't know. Yeah, we we weren't bad. We we did some cool shows in Chicago. We played in front of a lot of people. We would. Uh, open for some pretty hit bands. We, but everything was kind of on my brother's shoulder. Yeah, shoulders. Like we didn't have a manager. He was handling everything, and we were young. I don't think we just. I don't think we understood. No, what it took or whatever. Yeah, you know. Then Adam moved to New York, and uh, I started rapping. Yeah, and then our shit slowly formed over the next four years. I think, and that was. Um, you know, like we have District Somnium demos. They never got finished because that's when he moved to New York. But that was the shit where we like bought a mic. We're like, well, if we can at least do the vocals for the District Somnium shit, like again, it's spend four hundred dollars on the mic, and then you've never got to pay for that studio time again. This will pay for itself pretty quickly. Then when your brother moved, we just had a microphone. Yeah, and we're like, well, fuck in. Let's dick around with Pro Tools and just see what we can make. Right. Um, and that's how all the shit that turned into Bone Lang started. Was just like, well. We're kind of bored, have all this music gear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dress warm. Mm-hmm. Like all the like all that early stuff. That was yeah. all that was all that shit, man. And and then it was it was like we tried to do this sway parade. It was called Sway Parade and that was gonna be this kind of conglomerate. Like Odd Future was popping off at the time and I was like, Oh man, we can make like an arts collective and we'll do this whole thing like our homie Shamir, he's a break dancer and a producer, and he does like these juke beats and all this kind of stuff. Our buddy John made all this, this, you know, more like IDM type shit. And um, Matt was making some of his own music. I was making some of the same language stuff. And again, it's just over time, people either lose interest or just move on with their lives or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was just you and me. Mm-hmm. And Bone Language was supposed to be a joint project. Mm-hmm. And after a while, I think we were just like, what are we doing? This is stupid. Yeah. Why don't, like, one thing, let's just focus on one thing. Or and like that was 2015 tower. that we, like, it was bone lang. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, or like the Sammy Language shit, it was just, I ended up on every song singing backgrounds or something or like you that. you just and do the just hooks like, and is, shit. This is one fucking this thing. This is one really. project, man, yeah. So accidentally, kind of, in 2015, we, like, formed Bone Lang. It mm-hmm. was called Bone Language for, like, half a minute. Yeah. Um, but we would call it Bone Lang. I don't know, just like for yeah, rehearsal shorthand, and stuff. Yeah. We like, can we have like Bone Lang? Are we doing Bone Lang rehearsal and stuff? And that became the name. And the first recordings that we released under our, that moniker was like Gruesome mm-hmm. and Breathe Slow and Swagger. Dress Cold. We were doing. I think Dress Cold was at first Sammy Language. That shit was on my album. Which, Holy by shit. the way, I don't know where that is. I, I I think there's a couple kids out there that like stripped it from SoundCloud, like that might have recording. Mm-hmm. But I don't have any of those recordings. We, I mean, we still have all the contents of that computer. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, we yeah. have those old Somnium demos and shit too. Like, yeah, for sure. Shit that never got finished. Um, and then Bone Line. I mean, we just it was it's it's just taken on so many forms, and at this point, it's just it really it's like you and I in the basement, and then. Zach and Andrew Lawrence. Uh, in the other basement? In the other basements, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a journey, man. But it's it's funny. It's like just turning 
30 this year and with COVID and with leaving pretty much our whole team that we'd spent the last five years developing, mm -hmm. it really feels like year one. Yeah. And that's how I'm trying to treat it. It's like just start over and release really consistently with like machine like consistency and try to stay out of the numbers and try to have a good attitude about it. Yeah. That was something I really needed to focus on. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've been struggling with lately is just like, I need a fucking attitude adjustment, man. It's like hard. It's hard to, this many years of rejection can have an effect on you. You yeah. know, you learn that failure is your friend and you learn to push rejection aside um, to a certain degree. But man, it's like, there was something about 30 that I was just like, we're we're amazing though you know what yeah. I mean? like somebody open a door yeah you know but i don't know the longer we spend in this game the more i realize that there is none of that taking it personally doesn't solve anything no i mean it you know can make you feel better or self-righteous at least for a minute but it doesn't actually help yeah i I'm, I am working on it. I'm working on adjusting my perspective. And I had a phone call with this really sweet guy the other day. I thought, you know, we had a long conversation about it. And he was just talking to me. He's putting me on game about marketing. And um, Brandon Hughes, our, our agent, had sent me up with him. And he, halfway through the call, we spoke for like an hour and a half, just like stopped in the middle of a sentence. And it was like, hey, buddy, like, I can feel your negativity mm. from the other side of this like digital phone call. He's like, I can see in your eyes like the pain yeah like you gotta you gotta readjust like you can't be jaded you gotta wake it has to be waking up every day and being like all right like what are we gonna figure out today mm -hmm. which is hard to hear because i was like oh wow i must be really exuding this energy because i had no fucking idea i just mm -hmm. i'm in internally it's just like an inferno i'm like how is this not working yet you know yeah. what i mean um i just think we've been programmed to believe through the internet that 30 is like 150 in rock years <laughs> yeah and that time is somehow running out right and uh it's a lie that's just a lie do you feel any of that mm, ask me in a couple months when it gets closer to your 30 <laughs> i mean it's just a fact that people got famous younger in the past it feels like um or i don't know people accomplished shit younger i don't know I don't know if that's just an illusion. It feels that way to me that like all the eighties rock bands were like in their early twenties. But if you really look around at pop music today, like most of those cats are in their mid thirties. Yeah. It's I mean, hard. you get your Billie Eilish and shit like that, that like, I don't know, those stand out to you, especially when you're older than them. You're just like, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's root. Huh? It seems not that common. I mean, the thing is, I, I, I think I think it's people in their early 20s or even their teens and stuff like that are their that early success is, is so highlighted mm -hmm. because it's like yo look how successful they are at such an early age that I look at I'm like oh so every successful person looks like that mm -hmm. um, I mean I, I always used Mac Miller as like a benchmark for myself because he's, he's a year he was a year younger than us mm -hmm. and then like tragically passes and but I, I loved Mac Miller because I saw myself in him. I'm like, all right, like suburban white guy, kind of like, but you can be authentic and you can have something real to say. And you can also like um, kind of speak to the, the, great, the bigger hip hop community at large mm -hmm. and be an active participant that, you know, gives aid to the community that mm -hmm. has kind of thrust you into relevance and all this kind of stuff and I just really admired him um so in my head I'm like well I'm supposed to be like Mac Miller right I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. you know I remember going to Lollapalooza as a 16 year old and being like all right by the time I'm like 21 I'm definitely going to be playing at Lollapalooza mm -hmm. and I remember being 21 at Lollapalooza being like all right by the time I'm 23 I'm definitely going to be playing at Lollapalooza yeah and then I was 25 and then I was 28 mm -hmm. at Lollapalooza and I'm like I still haven't played Lollapalooza yeah and now I'm 30 and I look back and I'm like, all right, hold on. You're definitely going to hit the major festival circuit at some point so long as we don't stop, right? Mm -hmm. um, why? Why have I done this? Why have I set up these yeah. benchmarks, these false finish lines? I mm -hmm. guess Goggins would call it, right? David Goggins. But it's like, I don't know. Why do we do that? 
I don't know, buddy. I just feel like I'm supposed to, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've like convinced myself that I was supposed to be at a certain place by a certain age, by a certain, you know, and, uh, I think that's a toxic thing to do to yourself. Yeah. It's weird. Cause I mean, we've talked about this a lot lately where it's like, um, uh, you know, I feel like you allow yourself to be let down sort of because you're just like you, once you find yourself in a situation, you're like, okay, what is the best possible outcome? And if we don't hit the best possible outcome, that fucks with you. You know what I mean? Even I'll if it's a good it a outcome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's a good out, it's an objectively good outcome, but it's also like your impatience is also very useful. <laughs> For sure. You know what I mean? Like it gets shit done and like it keeps, it keeps you grinding and like, and so it's a weird, it's a weird situation where it's like there, you have to take the positive with the negative kind of. Sure. I've been told that I'm super hard on myself. And then I kind of, I remember being kind of insulted by that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, you should be harder on yourself. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I double down on that shit too. I'm not letting go of that yet. I'm no. sure it'll ruin my life and I'll have to deal with it at some point, but <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> Delay the inevitable, kids. That's what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I find I find my hardness uh, to be virtuistic sometimes. Yeah. But other times, I, I think I've I can like back myself into a corner and convince myself that we haven't achieved anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'll be like. What have I done? I'm a failure in every possible dimension. Yeah, exactly. It's like, is a, a thought that I find myself thinking pretty frequently. And it's just like, mm. It's bad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible. And uh, not being able to perform and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't want all this to sound too negative. It's like, I'm not trying to convince people not to do this. I'm not trying to convince people that we regret doing this or anything. It's just, mm. there's been some serious growing pains over the last year. I feel like the COVID shit put a lot of stuff in perspective. Um and it's really highlighted what you have to do, where the focus is for musicians and artists now to attain an income. Yeah. And they're all in areas that have nothing really to do with music. Mm. Um, or many of them have nothing to do with music and thus remain kind of unattractive to me. Yeah. Um, but we're coming around. We're trying to figure out how this is going to work for us. Mm. Um, and... I mean, I guess most importantly, just releasing music all the time and not just making some one once a year spectacle out of it and mm-hmm. acting like the whole world is supposed to stop when you drop your mm-hmm. your big 12 song album. It is easier to not beat yourself up about something not going like when you have one record a year. It's like, I mean, we kind of already covered this, but it's just like you've got that like jackpot mentality thing, like this thing either makes it or it doesn't. Right. Whereas with the with the individual songs, it's a lot easier to be like, oh, this one's, you know, catching a little wave here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's that. a little, it's easier on the soul. Sure. Sure, man. I uh, I would say as we get older and with this new philosophy, this new kind of approach, I, something I've, I struggle with is, is just the, the, the place of an artist, the, the purpose of why we exist is to like, we were talking right before the podcast, but like, don't lose your dinosaur, the Step Brothers reference, like mm-hmm. never, never lose your dinosaur, never lose the inner child. And that's what an artist is. It's like, that's the miracle of an artist is that they, they, they're able to hold on to a piece of their childhood and a piece of themselves from when they were young. And they're able to kind of relive that magic of newness um, in their adulthood. And I find that getting older, it's, it's not difficult to be childlike but Mm -hmm. it's difficult to um in this environment of constant self-promotion i find it difficult it's like i love writing and performing and in performing i feel like a kid Mm -hmm. and that's the beautiful but i don't feel that way when i'm Pointing a fucking webcam at yourself. Yeah, begging yeah. for attention on the internet and shit. It's like I don't feel that newness. I don't feel that like pleasure. No. That that like that kind of like transportation back to a simpler time, all that kind of shit. I don't feel that at all. So I don't know. It's like as as we get older, we're gonna have to find new ways to like never lose the dinosaur and and also not 
read, I'm reading a book that said one of the main points is like, don't do something that you hate. Yeah. You won't respect yourself. No. So. Well, and that's been the shit we've been struggling with is like, we've known for a long time that we have to do some shit that's not music. You know what I mean? And so it's been this conversation for months of like, okay, what can we do online that won't make us want to fucking kill ourselves? Yeah. And this is, you're listening to the answer, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and this, I mean, this conversation's, it's has, there's a, you know, a somber tinge to some of it, but like, it's, this is, this is what it is. I mean, this is the shit that we're working through on a day to day. Uh, there are days that I wake up and I'm like, we are the dopest band in the world. Mm-hmm. We're going to be fucking, it's all going to be amazing. Um, one day people will recognize our genius. Yeah. <laughs> and then other days I wake up and I'm like, what am, what am I doing? What am, what have I done? What am yeah. I doing? Yeah. Where is this going? Um, one thing that's nice about listening to that old the fucking like CLD demo is it's just like, damn, <laughs> sure. this has come a long way or it's like, I don't know if you guys are fucking thinking about music or whatever and you're just like worried about your skill level, that sort of thing. It's like, man, everybody fucking sucks ass at the beginning. Yep. Keep going, dude. Placing yourself at the bottom of a hierarchy is super important, um, which is where all of us start as beginners in anything. And it's what feeds you and teaches you gratitude and humility. It's what teaches you um, to treat everybody like they know something that you don't. And um, it's also trains you in the patience necessary to achieve like delayed gratification and sacrifice because we have we sacrificed our 20s to this man like yep. in a huge in a really meaningful way um we could have lived anywhere i have european citizenship i could have lived anywhere in the world you know what i mean like i and i always thought about it i was always like man i should move to london and be with my family or like man i should move to fucking italy and be with like my homies out there i should mm-hmm. i should go spend a year but every time i stopped because i was like well that would be a year away from this and that would be a year everybody that's not away from it getting better than me right so and we we stuck with each other through all this. So there's a part of me that feels twice as charged up. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, no, I'm not letting all that sacrifice go to waste, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it's just well, a it's, hard life, man. It's a hard, our, it's not, a, we live a beautiful life and I'm grateful for everything. I just mean, it's a hard, it's a hard journey. It's not. It's not an easy path to convince yourself to stay on sure. day to day. You know what I mean? There's, sure. a, there's a lot easier ways to make a fucking living or make a name for yourself or, you know, whatever. Find self-value. <laughs> yeah. And then the other uh, fucking, before I forget, the other thing about, I mean, it's just a fact that you have to be bad at something before you're good at it. And sure. so it's like, I've, I don't know, learned to embrace that feeling of like, God damn, I suck at this is like, that's kind of the excitement of a new adventure. Like, oh, I'm going to be fucking not shit at this right in two years but you've just got to get through that part and that's where i mean that's really the thing keeping us going right Mm -hmm. it's how dope we are (laughs) yeah like being able to listen back to some of these recordings that we've achieved in just the last year Mm -hmm. and be like okay and also like damn we're gonna be sick as fuck in 15 years if this is the shit we're putting out now exactly i mean another thing to consider i was on the phone with somebody the other day burko pierce Mm -hmm. Um, who manages some big acts like AWOL Nation and shit. He was around for that whole blame it on my do do. That's when that song was like a fucking triple platinum fucking whatever hit. And, you know, he's asked, he's like, talk to you. How old are you? I was like, I'm, I'm turning 30 in a few days. It was a few days before my birthday. And he's like, bro, like you're just starting. He's like, you've, I, I'm sure he's like, I remember being 30 and I feel like I've lived my whole life. He's mm-hmm. like, chill the fuck out. Yeah. It's okay. Just keep your, put your fucking head down. Keep doing the work. He's like, you don't even need a manager right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to manage you. <laughs> just put your fucking head down and do it. It's just keep going. Um, and that was kind of encouraging. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. this is somebody who's broken a, an act in their mid thirties that yeah. had a really fruitful and beautiful career. And I'm like, all right, just what am I really complaining about? Um, and it's not, none of this is meant to sound whiny. It's just airing out the daily insecurities to think of being an artist. Yeah. Um, especially now, man. I mean, there's no shows, there's no nothing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, path we chose, man. The path we chose. And continue to choose. 
Simon Simon was over a saxophone player who plays with us all the time, and I remember he said he's like you he just he's like we played him some of the new records. He's like my god, guys, and he goes like you just got to be crazy enough to not stop. <laughs> he's like this is where I think most of the people yeah. get off the ride, man. Yeah. Um. You know, this is where I think family starts to come into play. Girlfriends, wives, mm-hmm. talk of children, um, 401ks, fucking oh, fuck me, yeah. pro- owning property, all this stuff, all this shit. I was so happy to push off in my 20s, so happy. I was like, I don't need to own property. In fact, I put off making money. I would just work in the bar. Yeah, I don't need credit. No, wow. fuck all that, man. <laughs> I didn't care. I was like, no, 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 it'll be fine because I'm going to be fucking rich. <laughs> like, yep. And uh, it used to be so easy to put all that shit off. Like, it was just... I'd work in the bar a few nights a week. I didn't have. I, I'd made just enough to to cover my rent and my ass, mm-hmm. and then I was just here. Yeah, and that was the point. It was like a life I could leave at any moment if we got a call for the road. If we could, and as you get older, it's harder to justify living that way mm-hmm. as things get more serious in your life. And it's like, um, just got to be crazy enough. Yep, just got to be fucking crazy enough, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not let anybody come between you and it um and we've been unbelievably good at that i think so far yeah true uh we've had the horse blinders on for a long time yeah fuck yeah man <laughs> i'm kind of jacked up now yeah i feel better good i feel like i aired a lot of it out hell yeah <laughs> uh all right well thanks for listening to our age obsessed uh <laughs> rundown of our career sorry for any <laughs> I mean, it's the literal around, 30th yeah, birthday yeah. Co- uh, no, conversation. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, yeah. Make music. You don't have to do it for a living. Making music is the best. Yeah, it's a capitalist lie that you have to just monetize everything that you enjoy doing. <laughs> it's true. So just do your thing and join the same Maker Club if you guys are interested. Uh, it's a great way to kind of get inside of our heads and kind of learn how we do what we do so if you're yeah. interested from a artistic standpoint or a creator standpoint this would be really good for you or if you just want to fucking i don't know send see, the tunes see more of our faces fine all right guys peace and love be well <laughs>